I'm going to present um, the Apache Link data stack in use. Um, I've been working for a European EU-founded research project called FusePool, and uh, we have been using there uh, quite a lot of Apache Link data uh, products, and I would like to talk to you about uh, the experiences we had using them and um, a bit about these uh, projects. First about, uh, about FusePool, it's a European Union founded research project with a lot very ambitious goal there, that's from the description of work. Um, but uh, what we actually could realize is what I put in fat, at least partially, thanks to the Apache project, uh, raw content that is transformed into machine understandable content can be published as link open data. Search features include refinement and filter filtering. So that's about what we have. And oops. and these are the link data. What's going on here? The camera is used as sensor for switching slides. Um, these are the Apache projects uh, which we are using and which we, uh, well, these are the Apache Link Data project. We are using most but not all of them. I'm going to quickly introduce them to you. Um, here I have an No. I know you know what the RDF and link data is. I didn't promise an introduction on that. Uh, do you, would you like me to tell something about the underlying technology? Okay. Um, so RDF is um, an abstract data model where data is modeled as a graph. So RDF data can be seen as a graph. And a graph can be uh, serialized as an adj adjacency map, which is basically what we have in the triples. So it's node A, and then uh, the arch, and then the, the node, node B. So that's how an RDF graph is, can be seen as a set of triples. The, these triples have nodes and properties pointing from one node to the other. And the properties are always identified by URIs. Um, and the nodes themselves, they can be URIs or they can be blank nodes that when you draw the graph, just an empty, an empty circle. Or they can be literals that would be the actual values. And so a simple graph to describe a person would be this node is of type person. So we have a, a property RDF type pointing to a class person and has name John, has city, Denver, whatever. And then a data set is a, a set of multiple graphs. A uh, triple store is the, what for relational databases is the RDVMS, is where you store such graphs. Sparkle is the query language to query RDF graphs. It's a W3C standard, which uh, around one year ago has reached version 1.1. And with 1.1, it's no longer just query, like SQL is not just for querying databases, but you can also modify the data. So it's also an update language. Um, the association with the use case for this RDF and linked data, or the, the vision of Tim Berners-Lee, is to have a giant global graph. So we have all the, 
all the websites or many websites described using RDF, so we're not just document linking, but we have the actual entities these documents are talking about linked together. So we have um, a worldwide graph of interlinked knowledge entities. So it can be concrete things like a person, can be abstract concepts like a class, and these are all linked together. So I think that's the vision of the giant global graph from Tim Berners-Lee. And what comes close to this vision is uh, linked open data, which is open data made available using these linked data standards, which makes it much more useful because you, you don't have to understand many different formats. So this government institution is giving us Excel sheets that look like that and uh, the other uh, agency different. Okay, this was a quick introduction. Um, so coming to the to the actual application Apache project which work on linked data, probably the biggest one is the Jena project. Rob could tell more about this than I can. So I start you correct me on okay. Um, Jena provides an RDF API for Java. It provides a Sparkle engine um, that can run on their own triple store, but can also be used on top of other triple stores. They have various triple stores. Uh, TDB is one to, to integrate into application, and TDB is also, I think, the default backend of Fuseki, which is uh, their, um, so to say, triple store server. And um, what Jaina also can do is reasoning um, using the OWL and RDFS rules so with, uh, I didn't tell that before in the quick introduction, but um, using these ontology languages, you can specify generic rules. For example, that um, everything that has a first name is a person, things like that. And then you see, oh, this entity has a, has a first name, so we can interfere that uh, the, this entity is of type person. So this kind of reasoning uh, is supported by, by Jena, and they have an extensible API. They call it a framework, but it's actually a toolkit, but I've heard that because if English native speakers say Jena toolkit fast, this sounds like something they don't want to sound like, and so they call it Jena framework. Was this a Fair introduction? Did I miss yeah. something? <laughs> okay, um, then it's not a big project, but it was the first linked data project uh, starting to incubate. Um, it's uh, Apache, Apache Clarezza. Uh, it, um, like Jane, it also has an RDF API, but it's specifically designed to support uh, multiple backends. So this wasn't designed based on a concrete implementation, so just from the RDF standard, set of standards, and then let's see how we can connect it to different backends. So it has connections to Jena, Virtuoso, Sesame um, it also has Fedora backend, but this is a bit of a hack. And it's a framework for building RDF-backed web application. It uses the JAX-RS Java standard 
for RESTful application. It has a, an ex, a feature extending this, which is called type handlers. So basically you have your Claretta instance is backed by a graph and you say, if somebody asks a resource, which we know that resource is of type person, then use that type handler to, to answer that request. It has type rendering uh, with most notably Scala server pages, which allows to make basically usually HTML from the RDF resource. It supports content negotiation by default. So when you ask a resource, you get it in the RDF format, which is basically always supported or you get it in HTML if there is a, a respective uh, renderlet available. And it has a security framework using uh, Java authentication and authorization S system, I don't know. Or should it be F as framework? Um, another Apache project is Apache uh, Stamble. Its goal was um, to provide a reusable components for semantic content management. To understand this goal, we have to understand the history of the project. It came from also from a EU-funded research project, which aimed to make uh, the content management systems built by European software producers uh, more semantic, web aware, more, give them more semantic capabilities. And so basically the, the idea was to make, make tools so that uh, CMS vendors can enhance their products with semantic capabilities. Uh, it has five main components. The enhancer takes some natural language text and detects entities. So basically does what's called semantic lifting. We have content with no semantic information and then this is analyzed and it learns, oh, this text has to do with the Apache conference and uh, which has to do with Apache, which is a software foundation, which has to do with the foundation law of the United States. And uh, yeah. And an entity hub, which is basically a directory of entity which is used by the enhancer to look them up. It came with a content hub where you could store your contents and then it would extract the, generate the enhancement, extract some meta information, and then it gives you the uh, faceted search capacities known from solar. It also has a reasoner, which is, I think, based on Jaina, and an ontology manager, which is used by the reasoner. So the reasoner needs the set of rules, which tell him everything that has a first name is a, is a person, so that it can do its reasoning. Well, this is a bit more realistic view at Apache Stamble. It's mainly the enhancer. Then the entity hub is required by the enhancer. And uh, so it's also quite relevant. And then there, there are some other things there which are less used. Uh, another project is any 2 3 The name stands for anything to triples. And the idea here is to extract RDF from a variety of input formats. Um, it can be used as a Java library on the command line or via HTTP, what they call REST, but it's not. And um, it allows, for example, you give it a Twitter, a Twitter feed and it will create RDF from that. So basically many input formats, mostly 
here it's about, it's not about the like the enhancer which does some guessing. This is about structured text and to transform this structure into RDF. So here there is no guessing involved, but strict rules. We have these CSV files of this type and we know the first column is the first name and the second is the last name. The youngest project is Apache Marmota, which aims to implement the linked data platform. Missing a word there. Good, I didn't publish the slides yet. Uh, the linked data platform standard. The linked data platform is um, a standardization effort of the W3C and aims to define um, what the linked data platform is, essentially a read-write uh, web server to which uh, linked data can be stored and retrieved without the more complex uh, query capacities of Sparkle, you just, you put a, you post a resource to a collection and that resource will become part of the collection. It's a bit like WebDAV for, for linked data in some way. So, so what it supports is this collection, this posting to collection, and then what makes it quite complicated is the pagination features, and that's about it. Uh, Marmota comes with its own triple store, but also supports other. The own triple store is called Kivi and uh, is a versioning triple store supported by uh, SQL. I'm not sure if an arbitrary one or if it needs to be Postgres. The project also started from a EU research project, or maybe several, but the first one was the Kivi semantic wiki from 2008. A feature that it's actually used, uh, that we use in the Fuseful platform is LDPath, which is like XPath, but for RDF. So with slashes, you give it a path. And so from a resource, you can get like from person, pet, pet first name. So you get the first name of the pet of that person. And it has uh, LDPath templates, which is basically templates using this, uh, this path. So FusePool is uh, fusing it together. Now how could this look like? Extracting entities from plain text, for that we have the Stamble Enhancer. Um, authentication and authorization. You've heard Claretza has this. Presenting the data, this would be Claretza. Uh, faceted search, we have the Stamble Content Hub. So everything is there. And furthermore, uh, Stamble and Claretza are based on OSGI. So it sounds like just put the bundles together and enjoy. Well, uh, do I have some time left? Yes, so I can tell you that it wasn't that easy. <laughs> um, what didn't work? So access control. Uh, Basically, Claretza at that time wasn't, uh, had JAXRS implementation, but it wasn't based on servlet. And Stamble is based on servlet. So we couldn't just use the one from Claretza. We had to port it to Stamble, which also had, so we also had to add user management in Stamble uh, because the component from Claretza had completely different presentation framework, so we couldn't just use the user manager from there. Um, and um, most importantly, we had to ensure that all uh, Stamble modules work uh, in a Java security-enabled context. And this was, uh, there was also quite some, I mean, a, Apart from the technical aspect of this, there was also quite some community social aspect. We have to convince people in the community that even if you don't need security, 
it's good to have your component in a way that it can be used in application server where security is enabled. And then just some stuff like catching all exception and so the security exception gets caught is, is not such a good practice in general, but here it has really bad consequences. And so we have to, yeah, convince people that when they suddenly saw like a new exception, something isn't working, what was working, that they shouldn't just come and blame, ah, security, disable security, it's not working, but that this actually indicates that something isn't programmed as it should be programmed in the component. And so, yeah, that was, uh, we had to work on the component and work on the community to, to accept this to be, um, well, it's an option in Stambul, it can be enabled and disabled, but in the, in the full launcher, which developer are expected to develop against, it's enabled, so we had to yeah, give some additional things to look after for the developer, for the component developer. Um, then rendering the data, so Fusebool should, shouldn't just enhance, but should also present the data. And in Stanwell, the UI is, is tied to Jersey. So it's used some, Jersey is, is the um, JAX-RS reference implementation but it also provides some a bit proprietary, proprietary extensions, and Stamble used them quite extensively. So you couldn't just use those components in a different JAXRS implementation. And on the other hand, Clarita type rendering didn't work on that Jersey version. So uh, because it needs, yeah, you know, either the own Clarita JAXRS implementation and then later it was enhanced to work with Wink, uh, Apache Wink, also JAXRS implementation, or with the standard JAXRS 2.0. So to facilitate the, this rendering of RDF data to HTML, we added an RDF rendering, a new RDF rendering mechanism to Stambul using LD path templates. And then we also hoped that this would, because Stamble was using LD path a lot, so we thought this might uh, promote acceptance if we base it on this LD path template. Uh, we removed the Jersey dependence in Stamble, and on the other hand, we ported Clarissa type rendering to JAXRS 2.0. So now, thanks to these changes, Stamble can be used here, Stamble components can be used in Clarissa and the other way around. So it got, uh, it got portable. Then to, uh, to get people actually using these new possibilities, uh, we um, created Maven archetype to, to show how a project should, should look like when using this new design pattern, which is mainly the pattern the, the application logic delivers RDF and doesn't care about presentation. And then we have the the renderlets or the presenters which make the required, uh, the format preferred by the client out of this RDF data. Yeah, which is content negotiation. Um, then we saw on the list uh, content hub, which looked like exactly what we wanted in Fusebull. We post documents, patent document, PubMed files, and then we can do faceted search on it. Uh, th there were multiple problems uh, with this content hub. Uh, basically, the, this content hub took the data, passed it through the enhancer, and then took up little what it seemed relevant by some hard-coded logic, and put this to the solar store. And then the rest was the business of solar. Then you could do the, the searches on solar and stuff. And this was quite limiting. For on one hand, we had this faceted browsing. We had the facets like uh, US foundation law. 
but it was just a solar, a solar field value, nothing more. So we couldn't go to the detail. I mean, originally this was something somewhere in the RDF, but we couldn't explore more from that facet value. I mean, we would have to look it up, which all the ambiguity involved. Um, the metadata was so basically duplicated in the solar store, where it was incomplete, and in the RDF, and the one was not linked to the other. Um, there was a security problem because solar doesn't support uh, security, so we had an, an open endpoint, which was away from our control. We had a HTTP API that doesn't speak RDF. We could have lived with that, but it's not nice. And uh, well, hard to manage code, but maybe not PC to say that. Um, so we developed the enhanced content store. This is enhanced content store. So it's a store for enhanced content, not an enhanced content store. But that's, yeah. um, this is uh, for now not, not yet contributed to an Apache project, but it's Apache licensed on GitHub. We have a REST API to upload unstructured document. The document get the referenceable HTTP URI. Like in Content Hub, the enhancer is execute on uploaded document. And the data is stored. And most importantly is a Lucene-based CRIS. CRIS is a Claretza feature, which stands for Compound Resource Index Service, which listens to the graph and it changes and keeps an index which is actually based on that RDF graph. So with Chris, you basically say, of all resources of type person, I would like to index first name, last name, as well as the pet's first name. A pet, I'm not first name, pet's name. Um, and then it will keep that index up to date. And when the graph changes, the the index changes, and so there is no longer this duplication, or at least if there is the duplication in the back end, it's, uh, it's transparent from a user perspective. You actually find the RDF resources in the graph. And then we expose an RDF REST API to do a faceted search-like uh, stuff. Um, Another uh, feature we had uh, to add, uh, which is also for now Apache license on GitHub, is interlinking framework. So we had bigger data sets like uh, PubMed and uh, patent data. We wanted to integrate it. And we need to find out we had lots of duplicated resources. And if you create RDF from one patent, this will create a resource for uh, Siemens who registered that patent. And so with the next Siemens patent, we will have a second Siemens, entity, Siemens resource. And so we need a tool to go over the RDF data and find these two resources are very likely to be the same entity. And so state that so they can be treated as one in, in, in future. Um, we have a, a data lifecycle component which takes care of this step of transforming the original document, enhancing, um, and then interlinking and smashing. So um, interlinking will generate basically more triples. Triples that says A is the same as B. So the graph where it gets actually richer. And smashing is an operation which makes one resource out of many resources which are the same, which is terribly important for practical performance consideration. I mean, we are not running on, on the Norica <laughs> server. So we shouldn't have like a thousand resources all referring to the same company. Um, but this should be one resource and we should decide which canonical URI to use to refer to Siemens rather than having thousands of them and returning them to the client when it's doing a search. 
the, the, the advantage of this data life cycle is also that the data of the intermediate steps is kept. So when we, when we have uh, somebody calling and saying, hey, I'm not the same. I mean, thank you for having me in your database. I'm the author of that article, but you also say I'm the inventor of these patents, which is not true. And so we have to find out, oh, this Peter Miller is not this Peter Miller. It's not the same. Uh, so we have to remove an identity, which is one level back, which we can only do if we kept that intermediate step. We can go there and remove that identity and do the smashing again. Um, so here I have some points I would like to discuss um, with you, if we have some time and you feel like. But before maybe I give you a quick, uh, uh, I, I quickly show the application so you, you have an idea of what, uh, hmm, there are still the slides there. So yeah, it's based on SAML, and um, I talked about the REST uh, API of this enhanced content store, but we also have a little uh, front end for it, which is which I don't see. Very slow internet connection here. So what shall I search for? So we have 256 documents which contain the term tube. And here we have uh, some, some facet. It should show up the number, of course, how much it would restrict it. But if I want only granted patent to that topic, then this reduces, reduces the search result to 20. And then, um, Yeah, so, so what we see here is a, is a pure uh, JavaScript application which uses this, um, what I call, uh, semantic REST API to, to access the data. Now, I have been, yesterday I was at a REST presentation and the presenter said that REST is not well defined, there is no actual formal standard what it is. Uh, of course, the, we know what Roy Fielding said about REST, and one can discuss on how a REST, what the semantic REST API is. Basically, what my definition, the definition used here, it, it's, a, it's an API, if you understand the ontology, if you know the terms used, then you, and you access the entry point, so you know, you, what you need to know is you need, you, you need to understand the ontology, and you need to have the entry URI, and then you can fully use that service. And that's, that's how, how this, is, this is implemented. So you, uh, you're welcome to have a, a closer look at it. It's um, all the software we developed, or most of it, is on, our, is on the Fusepool GitHub page and uh, um, yeah, here you find the projects I have been talking about.
Yeah, so um, please ask me a question. You decide uh, what to discuss. I have here some, some suggestion, something with I would wonder about your opinion. Um, so it may be first, I have some concrete question. Yes, please. Um, it it's, uh, uses a custom Stamboll ontology. It could use um, open annotation ontology to some degree. What's missing in open annotation is the, the relevance or the, the confidence level. Uh, but, I mean, w you can set the, the, the confidence threshold you're interested in. Uh, but it, it works quite well. It's... Um, it, it has different mechanisms. It, it doesn't do any learning itself at uh, the current state. But uh, you can, it can either work on NLP uh, first, so that basically it, it, it analyzes the text to find, OK, this must be the subject of the sentence. And then it only specifically looks this up in the index. Or it can go on more uh, string matching algorithm that it just looks for the entities. And I think with NLP, the, the accuracy is better than just looking for strings. Uh, but even with strings, of course, you have the, you have the false, false positives. But especially in a process where it's uh, assisted annotation, I think it can be very helpful. I mean, you don't have to type Paris. You only have to uh, click on the cross next to Paris Hilton because your text is talking about Paris, the city, and which is quicker than <laughs> looking up Paris. More questions? Yeah, um, yeah, I saw lots of overlap. Uh, there was lots of overlap between Stambul and Claretza. And between Claretza and Jaina, there is also overlap, even though Claretza is also just wrapping Jaina feature. But still, we have these, we have these, uh, these two APIs for, for, for the RDF core features. Um, and uh, for us, it was occasionally a bit difficult to, I mean, this little stuff we, we donated right away. Then we have these things, which is still autonomous project on GitHub, which might be donated later or incorporated in some Apache project. But for this little stuff, it was occasionally hard to decide where to, in which project to contribute this to Claretza or Stambul. And it was a bit arbitrary. and. Now there is quite a, a complex set of dependency between Claritz and Stambul, with uh, Stambul using some Claritz modules, which in turn depends on some Stambul modules. And <laughs> doesn't make things easy. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm not sure what, um, I mean, I think there is also a historical perspective with these, um, it goes a bit with the next point, with this research project and Apache communities. So when we have uh, such, uh, we, had, we have at least two of projects, Marmota and Stambul, grew up from research projects. And so the research project wanted their results, which are best shown if it's 
if it's a separated on project, if um, they would say, J.O., we contributed that to the existing project, it might be a bit harder to, to present this at the final project review meeting uh, where the European Union has to say, okay, you can keep your money and want it back. <laughs> um, so this might be bring in some dynamics which aren't very, which are, aren't optimum for the, for the communities. Um, what, will you, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One one way is, of course, this uh, w with the standards uh, things. Uh, I mean, there was one thing which was reduced. Uh, there was Claretza was implementing its JaxRS implementation itself, and then it started using Wink, and then eventually it, it, now it works with any JaxRS 2.0 compliant. The 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 reason there was, yeah, first it, the feature was needed which weren't in the JaxRS one standard, and so, okay, own implementation, and then, oh, there is this nice Apache project here. Let's see if we can tweak their implementation so it fits the, the Claretza needs, and they'll find that's work, and at the same time, raised issues against the standard, so the standard evolved, so, so it, now, it now can be, it can be done on the standard, and we could dump a lot of code which was basically the same as in, as in a bunch of other JAXRS implementations which only differ by community and by license. And I think the same might happen to the, to the RDF API if there is some Java community uh, process. This would be one way and maybe it's a, um, yeah, but it brings to the first question with Sparkle 1.1, do we still need language-specific RDF APIs? Or, I mean, we're, when, we, when we program against a SQL database, we don't have like backend specific feature, or maybe we have some SQL extensions, but we don't have like a my new MySQL table iterator add MySQL constraint um, stuff. We, we, we just send a query and get the result back. And um, is, this, is this the future for RDF land too? What do you think? I, I see, well, I was thinking, I uh, wrote that question before I went out to dinner yesterday. <laughs> and then I thought there, there are still quite some, some limitations or um, I was thinking if I have, uh, like in Claretz, I have a template, how a person is rendered. So first name, last name, employer, employer's name, employer's um, address, list of pets of each pet, the type of pet, preferred food, and the name. So that's a, pers a template for a person. Now if we, if we do this on the graph, with path on the graph, this is very straightforward. Now, um, 
we could do this with sending tons of queries to the query for every field to the, to the back end. Or we could try to put it together in one query, but then I found out this is not really going to work. I mean, just a simple case, I want last name and first name in one query. As long as the person always have reliably one first name and one last name, or I can say zero or one because I can define fields as optional in Sparkle, that's fine. But if a person has two first name and two last name, I will get back four, four tuples of the, the possible combination of first and last name. So this is not exactly what I need in my template. So maybe what I would need is a query language which gives me back kind of a, a tree structure uh, out of a graph. That's Yeah, the, um, JSON LD would basically be a possible result for. So you give a you give a graph query, and you have a, a specific JSON LD. You basically would could maybe pass it the how is it called the context header of the JSON LD. You p right, yeah. So basically, you give a query, you give it a context, and you get back JSON. This might be, might be one way. So I mean, from, for me, the, the provisional thing is we are not quite there yet. We cannot yet do everything via, via Sparkle, either efficiently and then getting a list uh, RDF has a notion of, of linked list. And with Sparkle, well, with Sparkle 1.1, is straightforward to get out all elements of a list. But you have no guarantee of the order. You can do a quite complex query, in which case you will get a complex table with match redundant information, and you're able to get back the order of the list. But... Um, yeah, it's, I think we're not quite there yet <laughs> to fully drop our language-specific RDF APIs. Any more remarks, opinions, questions? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Fusepool is a European seventh framework research project, which is still ongoing. It will end at the end of June. And uh, yeah, the idea is to to fuse and pool data from different sources. Uh, what you saw before was some patent sources and some uh, PubMed articles. And uh, it also, which I didn't talk about because, well, I don't understand it, which is a nice way of saying I don't believe in it, uh, a lot of machine learning stuff that it suggests you things based on how you tag things before. It will suggest tags for the search result. I need to see it in action before I believe it. And... Um, yeah, you can now add tags, and you see a bunch of suggested tags, um, which is uh, this um, machine learning engine which delivers them all the part of Fusebool. And there is a second Fusebool project, um, well, which shares the same name, but it's actually from the EU perspective, it's just two different research projects. And uh, technologically, it has in common that it's also based on linked data, uh, but it, that's about it. Uh, the, the, the new Fuse pool called Fuse pool P3 um, should produce uh, tools that make it easier to publish linked data 
for uh, mainly for public public agencies. So they based on their linked data platform standard, which I mentioned. So the the Marmota Marmota is in the team is wrong. It's not the Apache community, but it's um, Salzburg Research, which for now did all the commits on Claret on on Marmota, and um, so this will be used. Um, uh, OpenLink software is in the team, so from Virtuoso we might use all the transformer capabilities to transform again some structured content into RDF. Uh, OpenRefine shall be used to have this uh, human assistant uh, refining of data. That's the new Fusible project, which will last till the end of next year. But today I'm here on the budget of the old Fusible project. <laughs> so thank you very much for your interest and for the discussion. Thank you.